If Jesus Christ is not the most important in your life, then you're not at the place that you are, that you are supposed to be. Because he must be above everyone else. And being above everyone else means that you have to prioritize anything that concerns him as well. Because you cannot separate him and anything that concerns him. It's not two separate, it's the same. You understand this? So he must be the most important. And when he's the most important, then you're eligible to ask for all of him. You're not eligible to ask for all of him if you have not given him all of you. So before you can open your mouth and say, Lord, I want all of you and fill me up to the fullest and give me everything. You cannot, you're not eligible to pray that prayer if you have not given him everything. Everything of your entire life, your desires, everything about you. So don't even, don't pray that prayer if, you're not, if you have not given him all of you. Because if you have given him all of you, if he's the priority, if you are seeking him, if, he, if you desire him more than anything else in this world, more than your greatest desire, if you desire him above your greatest natural desire, then you are eligible to say, Lord, I want all of you. We see that people that met God in the Bible and who God revealed himself to were people that, that basically lived only for Jesus. If you read the Bible, you'll see that. Only those who basically lived only for Jesus, who, who, base, who had no other desire greater than seeing God or doing what he called them to do, those are the ones that met him. Those are the ones that met God. And that song is so powerful with Moses. Moses met God because his primary desire in life was to do God's work, was to love God. In fact, when he, was, when he, was, when he found out that he was, had a prophecy over his life that he was called to be the deliverer, in his natural, he went and killed a man just to try to walk in what God promised. And that's when he was banished into the desert because prophecy does not come by you doing anything except being obedient, except being righteous, ex ex except being completely... Uh, submitted to God. That's how prophecy comes. In fact, prophecy, when, 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 you, when you receive a prophecy and it's like, wow, you don't think you can do it, you are not supposed to do it. You are just supposed to be obedient only. And when you are obedient, then you accelerate towards that. What, however, if you try to do that prophecy, you will fall flat, you will fail at it. If somebody, if you get a prophecy, God is going to use you. Then next week now you start to go preach, you'll fall on flat. Because God never called you to do that in your own ability. He called you to do it with his ability, being submitted to him, submissive to him. And that's how many people, many people, they fall flat because now God just told them he's got a business for them. They go to work and they resign. Then when they start something, it doesn't work out, they want to blame God. You have to listen to God every step of the way. I remember what God told me many, many years ago. I... 20 plus years ago, I was hearing when men of God, or oh, you know, when, when I met spiritual people, they would tell me that God is going to use me. This was 20 plus years ago, you know? And uh, even one time I, I preached once and I thought, hey, I'm, I'm in now, you know? But then it like, took years after that, you know, for God to bring me out and to use me. And that's where many people, they fall flat. They this thing, they read five books, one year they're righteous, now they be used of God. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. That's where many people fall flat because what happens is it, they think it's an accelerated thing. You know, it's like, it's like now you come and you, 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 you move in on God. Anything that takes time is very strong. You understand this? What is stronger, the mushroom that grows under oak tree or oak tree? The mushroom just comes up when there's light, lightning. Next couple of days, it's gone, but the oak tree is standing. Anything that, anything that is built strong, solid, takes time. And before God builds a ministry, you'll build a man. Before God uses, before God's purpose in your life, how you know God has a lasting purpose in your life? Because it takes time before he builds you, before he brings you out. Look at Elijah. Look at Elisha. They walked many, many years, Joshua, Moses. David, many, many years he was walking with God. Saul was trying to kill him. And then he came, he was king over Judah and then king over Israel. 
Abraham. I'll give you all the names in the Bible. All of them took time. And, and you see that those that stayed in God for a long time had the greatest experiences with God. They had the, the, the ones that had the greatest encounters with God were old. Who had the greatest encounter in the realm of man only? Moses and Elijah. That's why two of them, even after, they, after Moses died, after Elijah was taken to heaven, they still have been encounters with God on the Mount of Transfiguration. <laughs> you get in this. You understand this. It's because there's a depth in God. Deep calls to deep. You know, even in the same goes that, you know, still waters go deep. There's a depth in God. Not foaming. The Bible says, you know, the waves that are foaming, but they have no essence, they have nothing in it. They're clouds, but have no water in it. It's just foaming. At the, at, 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 in the sea, at the seashore, you see all the waves foaming, but there's not, it's shallow. So it takes, it takes time. It takes time because there's a time in God. Anything that is, even in the natural, they talk about antiques. Antiques are more expensive than stuff that's made today. There's always a value placed on something that has an age in it. Anything, even in the natural. So the same thing is in the realm of the spirit as well. Now I'm not talking about only earthly age because there's two types of age, just like how you are, you are a three-part being. So there's a spirit age and a natural age. And your spirit age is determined by how much time you spent with God. Not your earthly age, but your spirit age. Because you can be young, you can be 30 years old and still be ancient. Because what is your spiritual age? Because, and how do you know the spirit age is a spirit is on the inside. So when the mouth opens, then you know the age of the spirit. So it's not the age in the natural, it's the age in the spirit. But you can also be an old fool as well. Because you can have all the gray hair, but still be a fool. When you open your mouth, foolishness comes out. Or you could be young, and when you open your mouth, then wisdom comes out. Or you could be the same, the same age in the natural, the same age in the spirit. Or you, or you could be deeper. So your age, so it's not your age in the natural, that, that's, that's the natural age. It's the age now of the realm of the spirit. How old are you in the spirit realm? Right? Because we look at Moses started his journey with God in the realm of the spirit when he was 40 years old. When he was banished to the desert. So in that time he started his... However, you can at 40, 50 meet God. So it's your, the time where you, where you have that encounter with God that you decide, Lord, I want this. You cannot be, you're not eligible if you're just hungry for one week or for one month or for six months and then you want God to use you. No, it's a, it's, it, it's a, it's, it, it must be a, it, it must be in your DNA 24-7. If you can't talk God, from morning till evening, you're not eligible to be used of God. You, 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 you are, you get, see, you must be fanatical about Jesus. Some people, they call themselves spiritual, but they're only talking about God for five minutes or ten minutes or one hour, two hours. But you see, because can you talk God 24-7? Don't come with your throw-ups. Now you're only eating half an hour, one hour. Then now you're talking about soccer, movies, fashion, this, that, whatever it is. I'm telling you something. It's true. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Don't tell me you're spiritual if you can't talk God 24-7. You're not spiritual. You're still a baby, you need to learn. Go and read your Bible. Don't, don't recite scriptures. Because the scriptures is the logos. I want the rhema. I want the depth of the scriptures that God is speaking in this house, that is bringing the miracles, the signs and wonders, the encounters that, that you see. So don't give, because everyone can, you know, buy heart. You can buy heart? It's not intellectual. It's, not, it's easy to buy heart. It's not about that. It's, a, it's, it's about do you know the rhema? And not, not the logos. The logos is easy. They teach in university the logos. It's the, the written word, the history. It's out of the Logos comes the Rhema. 
See, yes, the Logos, you must know the Logos. But the breath, the breath on the Logos gives you the Rhema. The Logos is the written word of God. Very powerful. But Jesus, with the breath of the Father on him, by the Holy Ghost, miracle signs and wonders. Because it's, it's the teaching of the word, same as scribes and Pharisees. But they have no miracles. Scribes and Pharisees, no miracles. But Jesus comes, 30 years old. How come? Breath of God. Now he's the Logos walking. He's the Logos walking and with the breath working. You got it? About that, Jesus was about 30 years old when he comes to John the Baptist. The heavens open, the Father breathes. How do we know the Father breathes? Because the Father speaks and says, that's his son. You understand us? So he breathes. Then who comes? Holy Ghost comes on him. Then after that, by the Spirit goes into the desert to be tempted, comes out of the desert. 40 days. Right, but Moses, 40 years. Son of God, 40 days. Accelerated, comes out in the power of the Spirit. It's about the breath of God. Because you can know zero. See zero. You can know zero. Because the Bible says knowledge puffs up. But you can know zero. But you can have the Holy Ghost on you. The Holy Ghost and power. So it's not about how much you know. It's about how you flow. That's what it's about. You understand this? And to flow, you've got to be in the flow. That is why the flow happens at Jordan. How much they knew, but get to the flow. You have to be connected to the flow. Because in order to flow, you've got to be connected to the flow. And there's not many flows. You have to be connected to the flow. If you're connected to the flow, you'll grow. Because let me teach you about how manifestation works, how power works. Manifestation and power is connected to a wisdom. There can be no manifestation and power given to anyone if they don't understand the wisdom behind it. So you know when people say they want impartation, give impartation and this, it cannot happen. That is why always impartation was always to sons. Because impart means I am part. Impart, I am part. Why? Because of the knowledge that has to come. Not knowledge that can be given over one hour. Jesus, the greatest teacher of all, the greatest teacher, still takes three years with the greatest apostles. The greatest teacher takes three years with the greatest apostles. How can you think you go for one seminar, one month, six months, and then you get impartation? You get this year, zero. Zero impartation. Because how it comes is, it comes through a knowledge. And it comes to an understanding. It's called the school of the spirit. That's why in the Old Testament, they had the school of the prophets. They would sit around the, the major prophets. Sit, there was a time where they were sitting around Elisha. And the Bible says the man from Baal Elisha came with his first fruits. And then he said, give them to eat. He's sitting with the prophet, sons of the prophets. And he says, give them to eat. And the sons of the prophets says, it is not enough people who thought they were spiritual. He says, that's it, the Lord, they shall eat and, you know, they will not be hungry after that. It will be enough, more than enough. See, but he had to say, that's say the Lord. But he first said, they'll eat. So they wanted him to say, that's say the Lord. You must understand how the realm of the prophetic works because the prophetic is a flow. That means when you're connected in the realm of the flow, you don't, you just talk. It just happens. You just talk, it just happens. The, 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 the people are waiting for, thus saith the Lord. But when you are in the Lord and the Lord is speaking, God is just speaking. Every time does God speak in the heavens, does he say, I, am, I the Lord, am speaking now. I am, it is me that is speaking. When he's talking to the angels, how is he talking to the angels? He's just speaking. There's a deeper way in God. There's a deeper place in God. And that deeper place is reserved for only some. And from the sum, the certain. You get some multitude, some certain. Just a few, the remnant, the remaining. Because you know when you shake everything, whatever can be shaken will be shaken, and that which cannot will remain. Everybody, everyone wants to go into the chambers. Many of you are in the courts. But in order to get to the chambers, there has to be some testing. 
the Bible says like with fire. Silver is illegible only when it goes in the furnace comes out. In the furnace comes out. You understand this? Gold as well. Impurities after all surface. You know when they make in metal, you'll see it's called slag. Slag goes to the surface when it's heated up. Because only when the metal is heated, then the slag comes to the top. You know when it gets hot in your life, that's when the slag is going to come out. See what happens with fire. There's a few things that happen with fire. The Bible says that which is of wood, which is of straw, is not going to remain in the fire of God. There's a few things that happen when the fire comes. Firstly, when fire comes, the snakes come out. That means if there's any snakes in your life, when the fire comes, those snakes are coming out. Now, you, now the anger is coming out. Now the true self is coming out. When the fire comes, it's a purging that's coming. The fire, the snakes come out. Paul, he threw the wood, the snake came, bit him, but no, the snake had no effect. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, go into the fire, fire burns the bondages. They free. They tie them up, put them in the fire, but they're standing free. Fire is going to do some things for you. Fire is going to burn your bondages. Fire is going to bring out the snakes. You understand this? Fire is going to purge you as well. Fire is going to make all the impurities come to the surface. You know why? Because when it comes to the surface, then it can be taken away, all the slag. It can be removed from your life. Then your life is cooled down because then you become a solid block of gold, silver, precious metal. You understand this? Because now when the fire comes, you start to repent. What that is? Taking all the stuff out now. See, 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 there's two things that fire can do. When the fire comes, you can burn in the fire with your sin. Or when the fire comes, you can repent and get rid of your sin. It's what you choose. It's how you choose to behave in the fire. You, choose, you, you decide how you behave in the fire. When the fire comes, do you repent? Do you repent? Do you ask God to forgive you? Do you ask God to take those things that surface in your life away? Or you say, no, it's okay, it's fine. That is who you are. It's not wrong. Then you can never become the refined instrument that God wants you to be. God wants you to be a refined, defined instrument and most of the time he does it when you're confined when no one is watching he's doing it there in the private it's the secret thoughts of you when no one is in the cave he's dealing with you he's telling you get rid of those things otherwise i'm going to expose you publicly you understand this get rid of those things right there because he wants to refine you when you're all alone so then when you're refined when you're alone now he can bring you out of the sheath. The glistening sword out of the sheath. You understand this? See, but you're in the sheath. You don't know how sharp you are. But only when you are used, when you can be used, you are now taken. You're not for display. Display swords are not sharp. They only look good. God does not want you to just look good. God wants you to be the part. The two-edged, double-edged sword. And so God wants to make you sharp. God wants to make you sharp if you will go through the process. Now, the process is not one week, one day, 24-7, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. No, it's years. Years, 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 years. Because you know why? Because the longer you are in the years, it is harder for you to fall. You get, you're getting this? Because you, you, you must understand this, how it works. Whenever you try to do your own thing, you will never ever... You'll never ever flourish. There's the perfect example, Moses. They just told him about the prophecy that he's going to be the deliverer of the children of Israel. Go read it. Moses goes and he kills a taskmaster. And you know, a taskmaster was very powerful and very, very strong, right? But Moses kills him with his bare hands and now goes and buries him in the sand. But what he did was found out and then he was banished from, from Egypt. But he would have thought, but there's the prophecy. He's trying to help God. You can never help God. Don't even try to help God. When he just wants to help God, God says, no, now let me start the dealing with you. I'll show you, you cannot do this on your own. Moses had to go into the process. He had to go into the furnace of God. 
You know what is the furnace of God? The furnace of God is the desert. The desert is the furnace of God. Everyone that became great always went into the furnace of God. Always went into the desert where there's wild animals. The Bible says John the Baptist was with the wild animals. Where there are scorpions, where there are snakes, where there are wolves. Hmm? Where it's hot, extremities. Too hot and too cold. There's no in-between. It's the desert. You understand this? It looks dry. But that is where men are made. They're made in the desert. Because at that time, there's two things that can happen in the desert. You can survive to thrive or you can die. Two things. And so in the desert, real men are made in the desert. You know what happens in the desert? Does not go your way. Does not go your way. Deserts are not for babies. Babies need a dummy. Men need the desert. You understand us? Now you go to God and ask and say, why God didn't do this? And, and now I want to go back to your old ways. You need to be men, not, not a mouse, not mice. God is looking for men. Because God can get you up any time and say, I want you to do this or want you to do that. Now it's too cold, you can't come to church now, you know. God will never ever use you. You can never be used. Because when you get up, move. Get up and move. Those that were used of God were movers and shakers. Elijah, pick up his garment and run. Not walk. God is looking for people that are fast. God is looking for people that are precise, precision people. But in life, you must move fast. You must be able to do things fast. And you must do it fast in precision. God is looking for people of precision. People that are not lazy. The Bible speaks about the slothful and lazy people. You must do everything, you do it properly. Everything that you do, do it as unto the Lord. You, you me, means you must do it at your best. You understand this? It's true. You must do it, do it all at your best. Because all things you do it unto the Lord. Your, God gave you that boss. Because you need that boss. Because he's going to chisel you. He's going to chisel you. That's why the Lord said, do all things as unto the Lord. That boss is going to press some buttons on you, in you. You know why? Because he's going to deactivate some things. You don't need those buttons. He's going to take it out of you. So don't complain. God got you in a process. Don't leave that job. Don't be a sissy. Stay in it. Yeah, how can you leave a job without another job? What's wrong with you? Crazy. You leaving a job without another job means that God never opened a door for another job. You need to shut your mouth and serve well. 100%. Lazy people leave things. Sit at home and do nothing and want something else. Did they tell you to leave? No. So stay and work. And let that thing be chiseled out of you. Let that thing that God wants to be, deal with in your life go through the process of God before you become God's person. Don't be lazy. God is looking for people that are not lazy. People that are not lazy. The Bible says, look at the diligent. They'll stand before kings. Not just mere men. Just not, not just people, normal men. They will stand before kings. People that are precision. People that are not lazy. People that want to just move. Just move. Just move. Not planners. Let tomorrow take care of itself. You worry about today. That's what the Lord said. You understand this? That's what the Lord said. They were moving. You got to be able to not be conformed by the things of this world. God is looking for the radically, fanatical, real. Are you real? Not when you, 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 you certain way with that group of people, then with the other group of people you are like that. They call them, you know, two-face. You know, that's the two-face. You there talking that stories. Then you can just switch now. You're there talking that stories. You're there talking that stories. No, you must be the same. You must be the same. You must be safe. You must be the atmosphere changer. You must not be the receiver but the transmitter. Wherever you go, you must transmit and you must change the atmosphere. Now, if they don't like you, it's good. Who are they to not like you when you're speaking about God? 
Now that just brings up that spirit in them now. If you are holy before God, and if people are getting annoyed with you, then what spirit are they carrying to get annoyed with your righteous spirit, your holy spirit? When you're speaking about the things of God, they act spiritual. Because you see, your spirit can irritate those spirits. Because what's the level now? You, oh, you're too holy. Yes, I want to be holy. Because you cannot be supernatural if you're not super spiritual. Yes, without holiness, you will never see the Lord. You can't have, what Jesus said, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. You can't hit one truth here and one half lie here. Then you're a fake. There's no disrespect. If, if your mother lies, if your father lies, if your brother lies, if your sister lies, your friends lie, call them out on it. You understand us? Call them out. Because then how is holiness and righteousness going to now be propagated and infiltrate the dark atmospheres. You must, what did Jesus say? You are the light. You are little light. He's the light of the world, but you're a little light. A light is not supposed to be covered up. It's supposed to be put right up high. And you are that. And that's, that's what I'm meaning. When you call it out, when you say stop lying, then we deal with that spirit of lies. De deal with deceit. Deal with lies. You must call it out in your own family first. And call it out in your own circles as well. Call it out. No drunkard will enter into heaven. Oh, God loves the sinner. No, you know what the Bible says? God is angry with the wicked every day. See that old talk? Oh, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. So on that day, are all sinners going to make it to heaven? No. Go read the book of Revelation. Why there's a hell? If no one is going to tell you, how are you going to change? How are you going to change? God loves you. That's why he will tell you. Zacchaeus, when Jesus said, I'm coming to your house today. Jesus didn't say anything. Just went to his house. Zacchaeus said, four times more is giving back people. The adulteress, she never sinned again. 100%. After you meet Jesus, you can never sin again. Because now you're not ignorant, you're arrogant. You understand? Big difference. Yes, when you meet Jesus, and after you have that encounter with the Messiah, you can never ever sin again. Because then you sin after that, you're going to hell. That's why you meet him. You meet him, not so that you can remain in your sin. You meet him so you can change your ways. And he is the one that gives you the power to change your ways. You understand this? Heaven is a perfect place. Heaven is a perfect place and He is the one that gives you the power to be perfect. And He loves you, that's why He wants to change you. You can't be a rebel. You can't keep on doing your old sin again. You've got to change. You've got to change. It's not about feelings. It's about truth. What does the Word of God say? That is it. There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Now you cannot sin and be in Christ. You have to be sinless to be in him because of his blood. And that's why God works so powerfully. Because we're not a people, we can never be a people of compromise. Where is your standards? How, how are you an example to other people if your life has a double standard? You're not a good example of being a pure Christian then. Because who are the Christians? Christ like, did Jesus commit any sin? Not one sin. So how can you justify being a Christian and sinning? You're not a Christian. Christian is Christ-like, little Christ. Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. It's not about a good time in life. It is about, it is about doing things right. See, some people, they just go to church to mark the register. Okay, they went to church. They went to church. It's not about that. You see, you... You will be, that day you will be weeping when the rapture takes place and you don't make it. That will be a very, very, very sad day. Because there were ten virgins. Five with full oil, five with half oil. The ones with half oil never make it. But they were virgins. Rapture saints, tribulation saints. How full is your oil? How full is your oil? It's not about the things of this world. That's good for, the, for, the, for staying on the world. But greater than that is the things of the Father. Where are you located right now? Where are you located? That is the remnant. 
You know the remaining? When you shake something, the remaining. When wheat, I think, is winnowed, you know, in the wind, then that which flies away, but that which remains, that has weight, that has substance. You know, it's so powerful that the word kabod means the weight of God's glory. Only what has weight, weight, gold and lead, I think separated by one atomic number, right? But look at lead is weighty, gold is weighty. Kabod means weight. If you wait, you'll get the weight. The weight of God, the glory, the kabod, the shekinah, the seen glory and the, and the, and the feel glory. You know, there's two. The two glories. The two glories, the seen and the feel. They encountered the seen glory and the feel glory. Yes, it's true. Because they felt the Ark of the Covenant on them and they saw the pillar of cloud and fire. The senses. You understand? The seen, the glory, the five senses. The five senses can experience the glory. Jesus said, do not touch me now, I'm not yet glorified. Jesus is the hope of glory. He said, touch me, feel my hands. They saw Jesus. Moses saw. So the five senses, five spiritual senses as well, same five. But the, the, the glory, don't you want to experience God's glory? Without holiness, you will never see the Lord. They've got to have holiness. See, because you can't act for your whole life. One of the days it's going to break. And God is testing that out. God is checking you out. Are you acting this holy move? Or are you it? Are you acting or are you? Because how can you, how can you be two different people? And, and God does not put anything that's not authentic. He doesn't, he doesn't give value to anything that's not authentic. The anointing only comes on, on what's authentic, people. It's not what act, not an act, it's what's authentic. They're authentic. They're authentic. God is looking for the authentic. So God is looking for the ones that are the remnants. The Bible says, and they followed the lamb wheresoever he went. There were the multitudes that ate from him. And that's the multitude mentality. The multitude mentality is, what can we get from Jesus? The multitude mentality is, when's the next prophecy for business? When's the next prophecy for their house, their car? They just, that's the multitude mentality. Because, because not the multitudes. Jesus said it. It's written in the scriptures. After he fed them, then he addressed it. Yes, let your yes be yes and your no be no, every other thing that comes out of your mouth, what the Lord says, every idle word that comes out of your mouth, you're going to be judged on. You're going to be judged on. You can, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. Right? If somebody has a fault, take it to them. Go tell them. If they don't listen, then take two. Then openly. That's what the scripture says. The scripture says that. So we must, we must begin, see the scriptures. We must begin to follow the scriptures in its, all its fullness. Because if you follow the scriptures in all its fullness, then you will see the results of the scriptures. You will never see the results of the scriptures if you follow your feeling, if you follow your opinion. You will not see results. But if you follow the scriptures in the purest way, exactly what the Lord says. Then, when you call, he will hear. Before you call, he will answer. Doesn't the Bible say this? It says, my hand is not shortened, but your sin, but your sin. You understand this? That's what the scripture says. That means God, it's not hard for him to do anything. But sin is the blessing blocker, barak blocker. Sin, and sin is the smallest white lie. Sin is the smallest envy. Sin is the smallest despising. Sin is the smallest gossip, tailberry. Sin is the, the smallest thing that, the smallest thing, the unforgiveness. The smallest pride. You, 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 you heard what I just said now. It is a little leaven. Leaveneth the entire lump. 
And that is why you got to look at your, every day you got to look at yourself and check if you are, before you sleep, Lord, forgive me. How many of you are living the life where you are asking God to forgive you? You see, true sons, when they rebuke, they come closer. Orphans move further. That's how you know who's true and who's false. Look at this. I'll give it to you from the Bible. You want to know it from the Bible? Jesus severely rebuked Peter. He said, Satan, get thee behind me, for the save is not the things of God, but that be of man. Peter is still with him. Judas gets one rebuke. Jesus said, he said, he said, that should have been given to the poor when they came to give to Jesus. He said, that should have been given to the poor. Jesus says, the poor you always have with you, but not me. You understand this? You know, because a lot of people, they give to the poor, but don't give to God. There's a scripture right there. And immediately after that, Judas is not with Jesus. Judas is selling Jesus. But in front of Jesus, he's kissing Jesus. Why? He wants all the other, other ones around Jesus. He's a fake. He wants them to think that he loves Jesus. Now he's kissing Jesus in front of all of them, but he just sold Jesus. And you can be a Judas or you can be a John. Because John put his head on Jesus, and when Jesus is on the cross, John is still standing there. But Judas comes to betray him with a kiss and take him to the cross. When he goes to the cross, John stands at the cross. Who are you, John or Judas? You know, Judas will always want to, you know why Judas wants to betray you? You want some revelation? Why does Judas want to betray you? Because there's only one throne. Judas cannot put his seat next to your seat. So Judas, the only way for Judas in his mind to get what you have is to eliminate you. And some of you, your friends, the ones that you think is your best, your bestie. A lot of your besties are your Judas. You know, or oh, they want to put your clothes on, or oh, they want to put your shoes on, or oh, they want to try your things on. And they want to, you understand this? Hmm. Many, many times, your bestie is your Judas. Your bestie is your Judas. Many times, not all the time. Many times, your bestie is your Judas. Your Judas wants to dip in your cup. Yes, Judas, dipping in the cup of Jesus. No other disciple dares to do that, not even John. And Jesus even says, because John asks, who will betray Jesus? And Jesus says, the one that dips in my cup. Meaning the one that wants to eat what I eat take my place, drink off my cup. That is the Judas. And the Bible says Judas dipped in the cup of Jesus. Right? And Jesus said, whatever you got to do, go do it quickly. And when he dipped, immediately Satan entered into Judas. That means Judas was possessed. Judas who once was praying for people. Don't take people praying for people that Satan can't talk through them. Huh? I'm telling you. Judas was praying for the people, casting out devils. Then they all rejoiced. They came to Jesus and they were rejoicing that the devils were, were being cast out. You know what Jesus said? He said, don't rejoice in that, that you have authority over devils. Rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Judas was, was part of the ministry, but then Satan enters into him. See the heart. It's the heart, not the gifts. The gifts won't won't protect you when the enemy comes. It's your holiness, righteousness, your love. You understand this? That's it. That's the shield. And so Satan, and now watch this, he's with the Jesus. And Satan enters into him. Now watch this. All up until that point. You know what? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you something. Because many people want to blame the devil. Up until that point there at the Last Supper. Everything was the decision of Judas yeah. regarding him betraying Jesus. Yeah. Don't blame the devil. It was the decision of Judas to betray Jesus. Up until that point right there. And when he decided not to turn back, then Satan entered. You're, you have a decision in life, people. You have a decision in life. And, and Satan entered into him. 
And you know what? He regretted after that he hung himself. But Judas had prophecies. He had promises. Prophecy is dependent on obedience. You have no right to ask God why God didn't bring your prophecy to pass if you were living like the devil. If you were disobedient to God, prophecy is dependent on obedience. Here are the children of Israel. God speaks to thousands of them, millions, only to enter into the promised land. Prophecy is dependent on obedience. From the time the prophecy was given up until you're talking and asking, where's the prophecy, were you obedient? Prophecy is dependent on obedience. You must be obedient to God completely, not in that level and the realm and the understanding and opinion of man, but in the God way. Are you obedient? Obedience is very, very important. So that's what Judas said. Who's your betrayer? Who's your betrayer? If they spoke about someone else to you, they can speak about you to someone else. Yeah. If they were so comfortable to gossip about you, they will, be goss they will be comfortable to gossip about you. You understand this? You must understand. This is how it is. This is how it is. You, you're not someone special that they come to confide in you and gossip about someone else. Because yeah. they make you feel special. Like, hey, they're only going to tell you about this other person. It's because today it will be you. To, to, today it will be someone else they're talking about you. There you hit a flop. <laughs> now, next, it's you to that other person. You understand this? Get rid of the gossipers. People that gossip have no allegiance. They have no morals, no ethics. It's called Loshan Hora. You know what Loshan Hora means? Loshan Hora means the killing of a character. Hmm. It's one of the blessing blockers in people's lives. So when they kill someone's character to someone else. If you've got a problem, I say it straight. Me, if I don't like your, I tell you, I don't like your ways, you must stop that. It's true. You must, you must be able to tell people straight. Don't go gossip about the person. Don't gossip. We must tell people they fall straight to them. The Bible says to them first. And then if they don't listen to someone else, take a witness. Then openly. The three, the three ways. You cannot gossip about someone and then behind their back, in front of them, talk nice and behind their back gossip. Because remember, God is watching every single thing. Do you know God watches everything? He watches everything. He's watching you. He's watching you all the time. He's watching you all the time. And you know what? The devil is also watching you. You know why he wants you to gossip? So he can have a hold on you. That's why. You see, the gossipers, the gossipers most of the time, they're the most ones in bondage. Gossipers. Because they're always killing people's character. Never take on the offense of someone else. You understand this? We must be people that are pure. People that are pure in our thoughts, our mind, our ways, our actions. Because God is looking for the pure. God is looking for holy people, pure people, righteous people. That's what God is looking for. That's the people that the Lord is looking for. That's why you come to church. You come to church to, to hear the, the message that will change you. But it's your decision whether you want to be changed or not. It's not everyone else's decision. In life, there'll only be a few people that will really be true to you. Do you know that? You can count them. They'll, in your entire life, there'll only be very, very, very few people that will really be authentic and real, real people. And that, that test only comes over time. You can't meet someone for the first time. Now you know them for two weeks and you go tell them your whole life story. The Bible says they will turn. You know what the scripture says? Don't cast your pearls before swine. Read that entire scripture. Lest they turn and they rend you. How many people you have confided in, they use that to kill you? Hmm? You told them some deep stuff, some serious stuff, you know, and then they just, they just use that against you now. Hmm? Those are swine. 
swine. You cast your pearls before swine. You must know who to cast your pearls before. Pearls are precious things in your life. Things that are valuable. God can never use anyone that is a person that, is, that, has, that is not a confidential person. If somebody confided in you, don't go and tell everyone. They confided in you so that you can pray for them. Not to make that the news headlines now. You understand this? That is why some of you in this church, stop telling people your stories. Don't tell people. Don't tell. You, brothers cannot counsel brothers. Sisters cannot counsel sisters. That's why there's a leadership. You understand this? There's a leadership, there's a hierarchy. You must go up. You can't... Water don't... If you put two droplets of water on a table, though those two droplets come to each other, if you put a big puddle on the table and a small water drop here, yeah, does that big puddle go towards the small one? It cannot because it's the same level. It flows from the top down. That's how it works. It flows from the top down. So you must be able to understand how these things work. Spiritual. You must understand how things... Some people are just wanting a waiting to rend you. And it's not a spirit. Don't blame a spirit. It's the person's choice. People are quick to blame the spirit. Say, no, the devil made them do that. I never ever saw a devil ever catch that guy and open his mouth and make him smoke. And I never ever saw those things. It was that guy that did that. The devil told him to do it, but he had a choice. But just like how the devil told him the kingdom of light, God would have sent a messenger to tell him also, don't do it. So it's your choice. People like to blame the devil. Then why on that day people are judged? Not the devils. There's the devils will be judged, but people also. Because in life, you have a choice. Love. What you, who you are in private must be who you are in, in public. Who are you in private? Who are you? Your children know who you are in private. Your wife knows who you are in private. Your husband knows who you are in private. That's why some of them are looking at you with that hectic look. Because now you're a different person now. When you come to church, you must be the same. Amen. Amen. Yes. God will reward you. God will lift you up. God will barak your life. God will increase you. Don't look for the favor of man when you can have the favor of God. And how to get the favor of God is to walk in holiness and to walk in righteousness. There's only one way. That's the only way. If you, are, if you, if you follow the ways of God, you will have God's favor. It is so simple. It is for everyone. It is for everyone. The ways of the world is contaminated, is wicked. But the ways of God are pure. Pureness. Pureness. And you as a person, if you are struggling with these things, you must ask God to change you. Don't be arrogant. I say, no, nothing wrong with you. That's an arrogant person. A humble person will say, Lord, please change me. Lord, change me. Make me who you want me to be. You have the power to change me, Lord. I confess my sin before you. Him that confesses his sin shall have mercy. But whosoever covers his, his sin shall not prosper. That's what the scripture says. You can't cover your sin. You can't say, ah, no, no. You must, you must say, Lord, it was me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Change me. Make me the man that you want me to be. Make, ask God to make you the woman that he wants you to be can make you the woman he wants you to be. can make you the man that he wants you. Not what you want. I give you my will, Lord. May your will, what Jesus said, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done. If it be possible, remove this cup, but may your will be done. It's the will of the Father. The will of the Father. Amen.